Hey everybody, it's Joel Williams and Chase Ellaby coming to you today with week number 51 out of our video series of 52 weeks of personal injury. And today we want to talk about the five things you can do to help your lawyer get you the most money in your injury case. What's number one? Communication is key, yeah. right? We have to know what's going on in the case. And likewise, we want to tell you and inform you what's going on in your case. So that can be anything like let us know where you're treating, who the providers are that you're seeing with, if you change providers, what your insurance is, if you're living with anyone so we can get all the insurance information necessary to properly analyze your case. And then also for us to communicate to you about you know, the good things about the wreck, the maybe some bad things about the wreck or the incident, whatever it might be, how much coverage there actually is, things like that. So communication is always key. Yeah, and returning phone calls and returning emails because if your lawyer is asking you for uh, documentation, so for a good example would be lost wages. Yeah. If your lawyer calls you up and says, hey, can you send me your pay stubs or your W-2s or something like that, Chances are that's pretty important information for the case, so you need to send that to your lawyer as quickly as possible um, so that he or she can use that to substantiate and prove your damages. Yeah, right? exactly. All right, number two. Number two is going to be stay consistent with your medical treatment. Yeah. Um, there's certain things that are beyond your lawyer's control, and this is a big one. Your lawyer's not going to come down and drive you to your doctor's appointments. They're not going to call you every time before a, you know, you've got an appointment set up. They're not going to set reminders that says, hey, Johnny, don't forget your doctor's appointment today. That's not part of your lawyer's job. You find a lawyer that does all that for you, good for you, but right. uh, I don't know any lawyers that do that. So it's going to be really important to stay on top of your medical treatment and not miss any appointments. It's also going to be important when you're getting that medical treatment to not say things to your medical providers that might hurt your case. A good example would be if you're in physical therapy and you've seen this physical therapist, you know, two, three, four, five, sometimes six months, you kind of become friends with them. Mm -hmm. You start just kind of talking and you may say things to them and they're going to take what you say to them and put it in your medical record. And if there's something in there like, hey, I went out in the yard and tweaked my back or I went on vacation and jumped out of an airplane, Yes, we've seen stuff like that before. Um, it's going to make your lawyer's job even harder. So just stick to why you're there, the treatment that you're getting, and always be honest with your medical providers. And just do what you can to get better and don't create gaps in treatment. And that will go a long way in helping your attorney get the most money for your case. Yeah, absolutely. That's number three. Number three, use your health insurance if you have it. Yeah. Right? Because if you use your health insurance, you're not having to treat on a lien meaning you don't have to pay back the full freight of those medical bills. Um, and also avoid any litigation loans or anything like that that's going to reduce your recovery at the end of the case. So a lot of times, and we've talked about this in other videos, whether it's your health, uh, health insurance has to be paid back or you treat on a lien, but if you don't have health insurance, you do have to treat on a lien. And if your lien is $50,000 and there's only $50,000 of coverage, well, it's gonna be hard to maximize that recovery because you have to pay all those providers back, you're gonna have attorney's fees, you're gonna have, exp or you're gonna have expenses. So the best way to maximize your recovery is to use your health insurance if you have it. So I know sometimes it's not possible, sometimes the co-pays get out of hand, you're having to go three, four times a week to treatment, it can be expensive, um, but if you wanna maximize your recovery, use health insurance and avoid litigation loans. And again, with the litigation loans, those things get super expensive very fast. I know sometimes they're necessary because you, I've had clients that are literally, you know, if they don't pay rent, they're going to be kicked out on the street. So you have to get them in those situations. But if you can avoid it, avoid it for sure. Yeah, and there's we actually have a video in this series of the good, the bad, and the ugly of litigation loans. I can't remember which week it was, but it's there. Um, maybe we can put a link to that video in the comment sections below, so you can or the description to the video, so you can go check that out if you need to. But these are those number three is a way not necessarily to increase the gross amount of your settlement but it will certainly help increase the net amount of your recovery, which is all that really matters to the client anyway. Right. Because if you settle your case for a million bucks and you walk away with 10 bucks, right. who cares? Right. You know? um, but if you can settle your case for a million bucks and you walk away with you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, because you did the things the right way, you used your health insurance, or you didn't take out unnecessary loans and things like that, it can go a long way towards getting you the most money out of your settlement. 
Uh, number four, I would say, is another thing that's beyond the lawyer's control, and that is what you do online and being disciplined enough to not post things on social media. Because even if you have a private Facebook or IG page or anything like that, um, in a lawsuit, lots of times courts will force you to turn over all of the information off of your social media pages. So if you've gone on there and posted pictures of you doing physical activity or saying things about you know, what's going on in your life and your social media page makes it look like nothing's wrong with you and you're having a great time, you're out living life, you're not really suffering from your injuries, that's one of the first places that insurance companies and defense attorneys will look to find information to hurt your case. If they find it, I guarantee you, you'll see it again. So best policy is just to stay off of social media. Another tip for social media is to go into your settings and make it where nobody else can tag you in a photo. That way if you're at a wedding, you're at a social event or whatever, um, you know, I could be there, Chase could be there, I've got an injury claim. Chase has no idea I have an uh, injury claim. And he takes a picture of me smiling and laughing with my friends and family and posts it and tags me on Facebook. Well, I got no control over that and he's not trying to hurt my case or anything. He's just posting a picture, but it could end up hurting my case in the long run if I don't adjust my settings on my social media accounts accordingly. Yeah, and with like social media posts and also going back to what you're saying, you know, with the, you know, staying consistent with treatment and what you tell your like physical therapists and providers and things like that. And this is not to say like you're hiding anything. You're just talking with people. And what we see is that if you're posting a picture of you smiling, having a good time, or if you're telling your physical therapist, hey, I had a great time, went on vacation with my family. These are all good and these are all true things, but it gives the other side ammunition to say, well, aha, you're not that badly hurt, or you are having a good time, or you're not malingering, which is couldn't be further from the truth. It's just you trying to live your life and things like that. So it's really just a way to sort of mitigate and defend against what we see as tactics from the other side to say, oh, hey, you are hurt, or oh, see, look, he's smiling, he went to a restaurant. Um, so his back must not be killing him because he's smiling and you know having a good time, which obviously isn't true, but that's what they'll use to try to misconstrue it. And the more you're trying to explain things away, the worse it is for your case. So it's always better just to get off social media, not post anything, not have anyone post anything about you, and just leave it be. So yeah, because the, the, the tactic from your opponent's perspective is to take that one little line out of your medical record, take that one picture off of your social media account, take it out of context to try to make it look like you're completely fine when it doesn't really tell the whole picture so just don't give them the ammunition right. exactly. to take it out of context and use it against you yeah so that kind uh, of segues great into our last yeah. last topic our, our number five is just be honest mm -hmm. right be honest in the deposition be honest in any interrogatory responses be honest about any prior issues you've ever had your background, wrecks, arrests, anything like that, right? It's all gonna come out anyway, especially if we get into litigation and get into trial. And if you try to hide anything like that, it's gonna come back and bite you big time. I always tell this to my clients, because you know, when our clients come to us, they're vulnerable, right? They've been in a bad situation, they've been in a bad wreck. I'm asking questions that nobody wants to talk about, like, okay, they've been hurt before. What, who are your medical providers? We just have to know it, right? Because once we know it, we can guard against it. Because I've, we've seen it all at this point. We've seen, you know, clients that have, I've had a, literally I've had clients who were leaving physical therapy from a prior injury and get in a car wreck and the same thing gets injured. That's no problem, we can handle it. What we can't handle is that if we don't know about it, we never heard about it, and our client says, I've never had a back issue before. And then two years into the litigation, we find out, oh wait, you had back surgery six months before this wreck. We never knew about it. Now, not only you know is that bad for your case, but now you can be looked as a liar. You're not going to be trustworthy. No jury's ever going to believe anything you say. So, always be upfront and honest with everything about the case because once you're upfront and honest, it's just kind of like, okay, yep. Now push it to the side. Let's focus on what we need to focus on. Because if we give the other side anything to focus on that's negative for your case, they're going to take it and run with it. Yeah. If uh, if your opponent can make you out to be a liar, you're toast. Yeah. Exactly. Like the cases. It, you might still win it, but you're not getting what you could get. Right. And it's certainly going to hurt your lawyer's ability to get you as most the most amount of money possible through either settlement or through trial. Yeah. Um, so be honest with your lawyers. Be honest with uh, statements. Be honest with um, you know 
uh, trial testimony or deposition testimony, all of that kind of stuff. Um, even when it hurts, actually when it hurts, is probably when it's the most important to be fully honest about. Absolutely, stuff. yeah. Um, when it when it just you feel like it's the worst thing ever for your case that you have to admit that you had a prior neck injury, or you have to admit the, or tell them about a prior arrest or something like that. That's when you absolutely need to be honest about it because a lot of these things, not everything, but a lot of things we can keep out as attorneys mm -hmm. as long as we know about them. We can and, keep it out of evidence at trial. Right, exactly. So when you say keep out, keep out of evidence at trial. Yeah, right. but if you have been in a prior car wreck and you go into a deposition and say, no, never been in a prior car wreck, then the defense is going to find out about it because there's probably an insurance claim that's happened before or a ticket that was written to somebody. And if we don't know about it and you're on the stand and the defense lawyer gets up there questioning you about it and puts it in front of your face, guess what? There isn't a thing in the world we can do about it right. because it's coming in for impeachment purposes and it's going to make you look bad. So at that point, it's too late. So honesty is always the best policy, but um, I guess to sum it up, number one is communication. Uh, make sure you have clear lines of communication with your lawyer. Uh, make sure your lawyer has clear lines of communication with you. Stay consistent with your medical treatment. Uh, use health insurance. Don't take out any unnecessary loans. Um, stay off of social media. Uh, set your settings to where nobody can tag you on pictures and things like that. Um, and then honesty in everything with litigation and you should be in good shape. Yeah. All right, well that wraps it up for week number 51 of our video series, 52 Weeks of Personal Injury. If this video has been helpful to you, we'd appreciate you giving us a thumbs up or subscribing to our channel. Otherwise, we will see you next week for our very last video. Grand finale. In our series of 52 Weeks of Personal Injury.